Okay, our next speaker is Dr. Janetti Shiner. Dr. Shiner is Executive Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer at DHR Health. Dr. Shiner has extensive background in nursing administration, previously serving as Administrative Director of Nursing at St. Mary's Medical Center in West Palm Beach, Florida, and Director of Nursing at both Baylor Call uh, Scott and White Health in Temple, Texas, and Ben Taub Hospital in Houston, Texas. And she was also Clinical Nurse Manager at Memorial Hermann Health System in Houston, Texas. After earning her bachelor's degree in nursing at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Dr. Shiner earned a master's degree and became a certified gerontology uh, nurse practitioner as well as a certified critical care nurse. She earned her PhD in nursing administration at the University of Texas Health Science Center at Houston while also receiving a Lean Sigma Black Belt certification. Please help me and welcome Dr. Janetti Shiner. First and foremost, I am a nurse. Proud nurse. So let me talk to you about career pathways in nursing. I'm going to start by talking where I work, DHR Health. It's a large system. I'm sure you all heard about it, right? And maybe some of you actually um, have been taken care of there. It is huge. We are a level one trauma center, the only one south of San Antonio. We are Comprehensive Stroke Certified Center, the only one by the Joint Commission. And yes, I am advertising at the same time. Uh, these are some of the specialties that we have at DHR Health. What is our vision? Our vision is to improve the well-being of those we serve with a commitment to excellence, every patient, every encounter, every time. What is DHR vision? It is to create a world-class health system to advance medicine and increase access for the communities we serve by empowering caregivers to heal through compassion, knowledge, innovation, integrated care, and excellence. You always want to share the vision and the mission of an organization. This is what drives an organization. This is what makes an organization. So I decided to start with this. So this is the population of Texas. This was 2020. Just to give you an idea, Nearly 30 million individuals. How are we going to take care of all these individuals? In the past two years, we've been through a pandemic. We are all tired of the masks, right? Wearing the masks, right? But we lost individuals that we loved. Right? They were close to us. I'm sure every single one of you um, either know someone that were sick or even yourselves, right? Who took care of us, of you, of your loved ones? Nurses, physicians, surgeons, respiratory therapists, CNAs, and the list goes on and on and on. Right? Well, these individuals are tired, and I'm sure you, you hear it, right? How many are leaving the profession, the healthcare profession in general? So, how can we get individuals to actually join the healthcare profession in general? I'm going to focus on nursing here, but as Dr. Force men mentioned before, we have a crisis everywhere. We have opportunities everywhere. You have to be brave, brave enough to jump into the profession. It is very rewarding, but it's not an easy one. So let's talk a little bit about our population here, right? In the Texas border, 
2.8 million. 88% Hispanic. 26% live below poverty level. 38% adults aged 19 to uh, 64 have no health insurance. That's huge, huge. 14% of children under 19 also have no health insurance. 30% do not speak English. 30% do not have high school diplomas, aged 25 and older. So look at the known border in Texas. It's quite a comparison. This is where we are going to be, or where we were, in 2022, right? And I say war because this was before the pandemics. These numbers were actually before the pandemic. This came out before the pandemic. So in Texas alone, we were expected to have a shortage of nurses, uh, of nearly 25,000 nurses here in Texas. 25,000. If you look at the, the border, we were short of nearly 7,000 nurses. Usually these statistics come out uh, two to three years before. So now let's see where we were expected to be in 2030. Texas, nearly 50,000 nurses that we don't have to take care of us, 50,000. So look at the border, 6,000. I actually last night Googled it and it's almost 8,500 shortage of nurses here. Scary, isn't it? So what can we do to actually encourage nurses, encourage individuals to become nurses, right? Uh, to take the leap. It is, again, a very rewarding profession. I've been doing this for nearly 16 years. And we'll change it for nothing. So there are many pathways to become a nurse. Uh, uh, you can start as a CNA, and you can go and uh, get an associate degree. That gives you a, a registered nurse, uh, and you can work as a nurse independently. Now, if you go uh, through the LVN, or Licensed Vocational Nurse Pathway, um, the majority of the nurses that are LVN work in home health, um, long-term uh, care facilities, is NIFS. Uh, I'm going to share with you what we did uh, at DHR. We changed this. At, at, at the pandemic, throughout the pandemic, we lost a lot of our nurses uh, uh, to high-paying agencies. They left the hospitals in the valley, right, to, to go and make 100, uh, between 100 and 200 dollars an hour elsewhere. Right? That's a lot of money. Um, so we still had a lot of people sick here coming to DHR to be taken care of. And we barely had any nurses. Um, so what we did, we came up with innovative ways. Um, we launched the first Licensed Vocational Nurse Residency Program. And what is that? We open positions to hire LVNs in the hospital to take care of uh, patients in the hospital. Uh, this would give them opportunities to continue to get their registered nurse. Um, 
So we actually have still today, actually this past January, it's a year that the program um, was launched. Uh, we celebrated actually this past week. And we wanted to give individuals the opportunities because I know some of you here or the majority of you here are career counselors, right? Or financial counselors, school counselors. Um, so what we did, and it's still there, I'm, and I'm sharing with you all because um, I'm also recruiting at the same time. <laughs> um, this program is a one-year program. If you are an LVN, we hire you. You go and work in telemetry, medical, or surgical floors, and even at some parts of our emergency department. And while you work at that site three days a week, we are giving you the opportunity to go back to school and get your, either your ADN or your bachelor's in nursing. But not only that, what is unique about the program is we pay your tuition up to $22,000 for you to get that within three years. So whoever wants to know more about that program, please, I'll be in the back and, and come and talk to me. I'll be glad to share my card and more information about that. Um, I'm a firm believer that we have nurses. Um, and when I say nurses, we have licensed vocational nurses in Texas. There is about 1,900 of them in Texas alone that cannot afford to go back to school and become an ADN or a BSN. And this is where we are giving them the opportunity to while practicing and learning how to take care of patients in the hospital setting for them to get their BSN or ADN with the financial support. So um, now that I did my recruitment, <laughs> if you go whichever route you go, um, you can go and get a master's degree in nursing. Okay, and you can be uh, also a PhD in nursing, and then the next step is for those who um, don't have anything to do, they go and get a postdoctor. <laughs> <laughs> but when you become, uh, when you have a master's degree in nursing, the doors open. And this is just an example, this is just, um, one of the many, many pathways for nursing. Um, nurses can go everywhere. Uh, and I'm gonna mention something very important here, and, and I just, as Dr. Force was presenting, I realized that I, I missed putting in here. A lot of nurses go to school, get their master's day, and, and they decide while they are practicing that they actually want to be a physician. And we have a lot of nurses that become physicians. And they, some of them go completely uh, crazy, sorry, Dr. Force, and they become surgeons. <laughs> um, so this is not here, but I want you all to know that this is a very common pathway nowadays because of partly uh, not a lot of people can afford 220,000 death, right, after finishing medical school. So, Individuals go through the nursing pathway, they work, and they start getting um, part of their prereqs uh, to go to med school. So they save before they go to med school. Um, you can go anywhere if you are a nurse, anywhere. Uh, another pathway that is not here is research. Um, lots, of, lots of opportunities in research for nurses. So you can become um, a certified registered nurse, an anesthesia nurse, uh, and an educator. And from being a certified nurse educator, you can become a dean of a school, university. There is many pathways there. If education is what they are looking for. Uh, 
as a nurse practitioner, there are so many, like I am a gerontology nurse practitioner, but you probably know family nurse practitioners, you know, pediatric nurse practitioners, acute care nurse practitioners, many pathways there as well. Nursing administration, then you can, if you go that route, just know that there is no coming back. Um, within nursing administration, there is a complete uh, different route that is um, actually just open up for nurses too. Um, in the past, uh, a nurse could only be a chief nursing officer. Today, you can be a COO and even a CEO. There are many nurses that have become CEO. Another pathway that didn't exist before, right? Because, because nurses are dominating everywhere. So you can also be a clinical nurse specialist, which is basically someone that, uh, very similar to an educator, but with more skill set. You can be a forensic nurse, and a forensic nurse is someone that treats vi victims of a sexual assault. It's a specialty. And here in the valley, is, sadly, is something that occurs quite often, and we see quite often. So we have several of uh, those nurses working at the HR. Um, from there, you can go either through the route of a doctor of nursing, or you can go through a PhD, which is more research focused, which that's what I did. But um, I wanted to be a certified crazy nurse, so I went uh, the nursing administration route and the PhD route. So I got dual certification, dual craziness certifications, just so you all know. <laughs> So I wanted to talk about people, Mexican-American people that made a difference. And I wanted to start, I think it's important when, when um, you talk about a career um, as rewarding as healthcare, that you actually look at the individuals that, uh, as Dr. Force mentioned, were the brave ones, the first ones that said, I can do it. Here are some of the Mexican Americans or Hispanics that were the pioneers, and I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of them. And I think when you, when you talk to um, the students, I think it's important to relay that to them as well, right? Because um, as Hispanics, as Latinos, we tend to think um, that we can't do this. This is proof that we can do this. So Hector Hugo Gonzalez, he actually grew up at the border, at the bank. Uh, at the riverbank here in Mexico, at the border of Mexico. He was the first, very first Mexican American to receive a PhD in nursing. The very first one from the Rio Grande Valley. Henrietta Villa Escusa. She had many firsts first and only Hispanic public health supervisor at the public health department. She was the first healthcare administrator in that department as well for the United States. That's huge, huge. She uh, was the first Mexican-American chief a nurse consultant in the Office of Maternal and Child Health Care. Hilda Ortiz, the first nurse with a Doctor of Nurse Practice in um, Healthcare Administration. 
this is looking at the pioneers, right? But I also wanted to look at people today. Some of you might know some of these individuals because they are here again from our community. Every single one of them is a nurse. So Adriana Nava is actually the president of the National Association of Hispanic Nurses. Laura Disk used to be the assistant chief nursing officer at DHR. And she is uh, the representative for nurse practice for the Latino community at the Texas Board of Nursing. Marta Salmon, she is uh, someone that I met and she's a lot of fun. She decided that besides having 11 brothers and sisters, she wanted to become a nurse. Um, and she wanted to make sure that um, her dream of becoming a nurse could be shared with everyone else. She launched, and you can Google it, the Latina RN. And basically, uh, she put resources out there for, for nurses in the community, uh, Latinas, Latinos, to be how to become a nurse. So, um, you Google Latina RN and you'll find her. It's the first thing that comes up. And then Adriana Perez. Research, research, research. Dr. Rao, I'm sure you would love her. Um, she's focused on research, but in the Mexican Latino community. She wants to take care of the old individuals, but also her focus is starting when they are a child, right? So um, she has a lot of sponsored from NIH, uh, very well known in the research community. These are my references. And before I go to the thank you, I want to say one more thing. So you have all the opportunity to talk to individuals and guide them, right? Am I? So from today, or from, for this, from this presentation, I want you to take one thing from it, if anything. We need to take care of our community, right? So we need to encourage our community to step up. There are a lot of resources out there. Individuals can become nurses. There are different pathways. They don't need to go straight to nursing, but if they want, they can. But it's important to uh, tell them that their dream can become a reality. Thank you. Do I have time for questions? Anybody has questions? Yes. Um, I know in other states they're forcing nurses who get their RN to have a, oh, um, I know in other states that they're forcing people with their RN degree to get their BSI with the five years when they're working in hospital. Is that a time that's going to happen in Texas? Because I'm not sure if it is working. So I think what you were referring to is magnet facilities. So as, you, uh, as hospitals become level one trauma center, comprehensive stroke certification, uh, what defines nursing in general is for hospitals, if you get a, what is called a magnet certification, that means you are, your organization is a nurse-friendly and driven hospital and supports nursing. So for that to happen, um, you have, the organization has to have 80% of the nurses employed as BSNs. Um, so I believe that's what uh, you are referring to. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. Okay. 
No more questions? All right. Well, thank you all.